Big Pharma is a trillion dollar industry and no one in the world spends more on prescription drugs than Americans. Drug prices here are soaring and it has many begging and borrowing to stay alive. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm on my way to meet a 23-year-old type 1 diabetic. Uh, it's not even 8 a.m. in the morning here, and he's just rung to say he's incredibly sick. He's been vomiting since he woke up, so he's asked me to pick up a hot tea. We're going to take it to him, and we'll see what condition he's in. This is Landon Johnson. He's a type 1 diabetic and has been vomiting almost daily for the past two years. It's happening so regularly, he's even started losing his teeth. I felt alright when I first woke up, but maybe not even like 20 minutes later after I got in the shower, I just felt so nauseous. I was thrown up in the shower for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, this is pretty much my, my life in here. This is usually where I get sick, but... This is um, your room? Mm-hmm. Uh, keep a trash bag by the bed for when I get nauseous in the middle of the night. I usually have a, a couple like double bags in here. I always buy scented bags <laughs> just because it's awful. Constantly high blood sugar levels from his type 1 diabetes has damaged the nerves in his stomach and caused a condition known as gastroparesis so he can barely digest food. There's dead patches outside around my porch from where I've thrown up so much. I'll just all of a sudden not be able to hold down anything. I can't digest food or water. Landon is so sick because he isn't getting enough insulin, the drug that diabetics rely on to reduce blood sugar levels. Well, 364 is not a good reading. Um, that's probably why I was sick this morning. So what is a normal reading meant to be? For a, a normal person that's not a diabetic, a blood sugar reading that's normal would be like 80 to 120. And mine's 364, so yeah, that's not, that's not awesome, <laughs> not at all. If I let it set too long, I would, I would be in the hospital. Landon tells me he recently aged off state welfare insurance, which means now he's uninsured. Earning just $9.50 an hour at a nearby gas station, he says he can't afford insulin. That was fun. <laughs> so I actually tried to stock up on as much insulin as I could. It's a, it's a good idea to go. In the I kitchen, he shows me his supplies that are running out. Yeah. You only got four pens. Four pens and this, well, there's this half vial. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's it. And that may last me a month, month and a half at most. It's probably $500 to pick up a pack of five of these pins. And that's really? a lot. Are you worried about this running out right now? Oh, I think about that all, all the time. I think about that all day. This is my life in my hands. <laughs> Quite literally. Cool. Around 7.5 million Americans rely on insulin and it's had some of the largest increases in costs in recent years. The price of just one 10 millimetre vial of Lantus, one of the most popular insulins on the market, has shot up from just $35 in 2001 to $270 today. Yeah. Do you worry that this could kill you? I mean, that's, yes, <laughs> just yes. That's, that's all I can say to that, because that's a constant thought too. Just that I'm gonna, pass away before I'm old enough to, for that to make sense, you know? It's not just the uninsured, like Landon, who are having trouble affording their prescriptions. Almost half of insured US adults under 65 are on high deductible plans, so it only kicks in after they've spent thousands of dollars. This is Antavia's area over here, the life of Antavia. 
from birth, as you see, to young adult. She was a very, very happy little girl. Mm. She was. Like Landon Johnson, Antavia Warsham was a type 1 diabetic. She died when she was just 22 years old. She was photogenic. She loved taking photos. Loved taking photos. This one here was our last Christmas together. Our last Christmas. Even though she had insurance, her mum says she died because she couldn't afford her insulin. Prior to her passing away and up to the age of 21, she had secondary coverage, but it only covered her up until the age of 21. But after she aged off, it was like I had to pick up what the primary didn't pay and we just, we couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. That's when she that. started rationing. This is where Aunt Tavia was living and um, she passed away at home and her room was up there. That was her window right there in the front. My son, Damien, found her, her brother. She was face down. Um, yeah, we sat there on, on that curb for a long time and they finally brought her out in that black bag. I never did get to see her. And Tavia died because prolonged high blood sugar levels essentially poisoned her body, causing organ failure. This is known as diabetic ketoacidosis. Even though she had that empty insulin pen in her bed, we didn't know, I didn't know. Again, I just did not know that my baby had passed away due to uh, rationing her insulin. So they found an insulin pen in her bed. bed. In, beside, in her bed beside her. Mm. Empty. So she had already used everything that she had. Incredibly, Antoinette now faces the same problem all over again with Antavia's sister, who's also a type 1 diabetic. Good morning, daughter. Good morning. Antonique is my youngest. She's 19 years old. Right now, she's covered, which is a blessing, but when she turns 21, she's gonna age off. How much insulin do you have on hand? Like, two boxes worth left. Oh, well, we definitely need yeah. more. I'm scared that soon I'll be planning another service for a, a young child. Well, I'm headed your way. Mommy loves you, and I will see you soon. I love you too. Okay, bye. -bye. bye. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. Three years ago, Donald Trump pledged to lower prescription prices. Congratulations, Mr. President. A priority of mine will be the cost of prescription drugs. We're going to get the costs way down. But so far, no concrete action has been taken. The issue is whether the Democratic Party has the guts to stand up to the corrupt, price-fixing pharmaceutical industry. It's now the biggest issue on the campaign trail, ahead of next year's presidential election. The eight biggest pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies last year profited $72 billion. The problem we've got right now is the overall cost of health care. While Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders want Medicare for all, President Trump has suggested legalizing a mass importation of medicines from Canada. But while both sides acknowledge there's a problem, there's still no bipartisan solution. Good morning, Antonique. Mommy, miss you so much. Are you ready to go to Canada? Yep. This is Callie. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. Until there is, Antoinette and Antonique are taking matters into their own hands. Today, they're looking abroad to meet their medical needs. We are headed to uh, Windsor, Canada to purchase Antonique um, some insulin, where it's less expensive than the United States. So what are you hoping to find out exactly when you get to the other side? The difference in price from my own knowledge and Antonique's knowledge, so that if laws are not changed soon and the pharmaceutical companies do not lower their drug prices in the United States, me and Antonique will know how much we would have to pay in Canada. Have you ever done this before? I have never done this before. 
I feel like I'm doing what needs to be done for my daughter to stay alive. The Canadian border is a two-hour drive from Antonique's college. Insulin formulas are the same there, and they're made by the same manufacturers. The only thing that's different is the price. Hi. I just can't believe it was just that easy to cross over to Canada. Just on the other side, there are 20 pharmacies catering to medical tourists. At any one, Antonique can buy up to a 90-day supply of insulin for personal use only. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. We are here to uh, purchase insulin today. Okay, uh, which insulin? Novolog and Lantus. All right, just give me one more. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have some ice packs for you. So we have our box of Lantus and, uh, and Novolog. Yep. Yes, sir, please. So, okay. so it's 90 US for a solar star. Okay. We can afford that. We can afford $90 every month. So 65 plus 90 is $155 per month times 12 is $1,145 per year for her insulin. But in the United States, we pay this every 90 days. That's, that's not fair to the United States of America, people. I'm just, yeah, I, yeah, that's mind boggling. It breaks my heart. Are there a lot of Americans crossing the border to buy medications like this? Yes. We get many phone calls every day. We had someone driving like 18 hours because they couldn't fly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Okay, Thank bye. you. It's estimated tens of millions of Americans now travel abroad like this for cheaper prescription drugs. This is a relief because there's always a second option. Mm -hmm. Just know that there's like a backup plan yeah. if something goes bad. Is it a bit bittersweet? Yeah, just like that we have to go through losing my sister to, you know, find this or find out this information. It's just pharmaceutical greed. I'm very upset about it. What we're facing is really a kind of humanitarian crisis. What we see is the tip of the iceberg. For every young person who's died, there's probably hundreds who are struggling. It's across the board. I mean, antibiotics, many of which have been around for a long time, they've gone up in price double, triple, quite often. The EpiPen went from something like $80 to $600. There was one case of medication for infantile spasm in which the price went up something like 10,000 per cent. In Boston, Massachusetts, I'm joining Dr. Vikas Sani, who's preparing to take on Big Pharma. He's a cardiologist with more than 30 years' experience across community hospitals, private practices, and he teaches at Harvard University. My name's Steph. I'm feeling ready. Alan, feeling committed. Koss, feeling proud. What we're about to do with Sanofi is literally speaking truth to power. Ask any marshal in the area. Today, Dr. Sani and his fellow protesters are targeting one of the largest insulin manufacturers. Sanofi is one of uh, three large manufacturers of insulin. Together, those three cover roughly 90% of the market. So they're functioning like a cartel. They do have it within their power to lower their prices, but of course, it's not something they're going to do voluntarily. Hey, let's go. All right, let's go, quick, quick. Dr. Sani says big pharma companies like Sanofi are abusing loopholes in the US patent system finding ways to extend the patents of drugs. They prevent competition and keep their prices high. You guys, bring it in on this side of the logo too. So there are various techniques for maintaining the monopoly. In the case of insulin, for example, the patent has been extended by patenting the delivery mechanism, not the medication itself. Sophie, you can't hide. We can see your greedy side. Even though the formula for insulin has barely changed in 100 years, Sanofi, the maker of Lantus Insulin, has filed 74 patent applications on it alone. This means it's created the potential for a competition-free monopoly for 37 years. From the point of view of Wall Street, 
that's almost uh, you know the natural and logical thing to do if you can corner a market on something and then jack up the price there is no countervailing force there is no ability of the consumer to drop it or walk away jada renee lewis age 24 died june 22nd 2019. she died because she could not afford her insulin Wall Street has recognized that they can make a killing, and they're literally sometimes making a killing. No more deaths. No more deaths. No more deaths. Pharma don't care for you. The pharmaceutical industry argues America is carrying the cost of research and development for the rest of the world. I think you and others in the industry are stonewalling on the key issue which is actually lowering list prices. When called before Congress in February this year, executives from seven of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies argued if Americans stopped paying their high prices, investment in innovative treatments would fall. We will not have a viable, predictable market that will allow people to continue to put the very large amounts of money up to find solutions to some of the hardest problems like Alzheimer's. In the future, we won't get these drugs. Hi, Josh. Hi, how are you? Callista, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is not an industry like tobacco. What is this it just like? isn't. Pharmaceutical industry is producing products that at least in some cases are life-saving and in many cases are at least helping contribute to someone's health. So I think there's a big difference there. Josh Cohen is a pricing analyst who spent 20 years at Tufts University researching drug development and says current prices are fair. It's more complex than simply saying, oh, the prices are too high. You need to always calculate the price in relation to its effectiveness. What is the drug doing for patients? So, for example, we have a number of gene therapies that cost quite a bit of money. Um, some of them cost 700000 or even more uh, per patient. But some of them promise a one-off cure. Um, and if indeed they deliver on that promise of a one-off cure, I think anyone would say that 700000 is worth it. Josh also says it's not just Big Pharma raising the cost of drugs. They've had to cough up a lot in terms of rebates to insurance companies and pharmacy benefit managers who have not always passed through uh, those rebates to the end user, to the patient, to the family. You could indeed say, hey, those list prices are too high for products uh, such as insulin. At the same time, where are the rebates going? Mm -hmm. Where are they being retained as profit? Um, are they being passed through to employers and health plans but not passed through to the patient? That's a major problem. This is what's wrong with US drug pricing. It remains complex and non-transparent. Everyone along the chain is making money, whilst the consumer, the person least able to afford it, pays for the scheme. If you're highly insured, you don't notice. But if you're not, you get hit hard. Until laws or the system change, everyday Americans who fall through the cracks are being forced to turn to the black market. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Don't worry, kiddo. In Vero Beach, Florida, Elma Massey is living with chronic hepatitis C. Look at you, you ate almost the whole entire jar, kid. A former drug user, he's been clean for four years. But if the hep C is not treated soon, it will destroy his liver, causing cancer or even death. Yeah. Had it for five to ten years from what the doctor was saying and didn't even know it. It's also highly contagious. One of the things that I have to be the most careful of is moving around a lot in the house because if, per se, I catch myself on a nail or something and I start bleeding, he's teething right now, so he's kind of got open wounds in his mouth from the teeth. I'm worried that he might get some of that blood on his binky or something and put it in his mouth which that would be like a one-way ticket to get it. <laughs> hep C kills more Americans each year than any other infectious disease, and yet it's completely curable. So these are the medications? Yep. 
Here in the States, it would be about 20,000 to 100,000 uh, US dollars, which is insane. That's enough to put someone through a full tuition of college, enough to buy a house, and yet it fits into a small box. <laughs> So what was it like when that package arrived? It was mind-boggling because I knew that I had a breath, breath of fresh light coming to me because this is just too insane. Someone of my stature coming from nothing can actually mean enough to someone else to be helped out like this. Mm -hmm. yes. Having been denied coverage, Elma has purchased these medications from a seller overseas. So does your doctor know that you're taking these? No, she doesn't. I'm doing it on blind faith. Yeah, I was more concerned because we don't know what they might have could have inserted into these pills or where he's getting these medications from. If I don't take these, I might as well just dig a hole out front and put myself in it. <laughs> As a full-time carer to his son, and with another child now on the way, Elmer doesn't have a choice. Boy. Outside, he shows me how he found the seller online. This is the Hep C support group community. It's a Facebook group. Yes, which is very shocking. <laughs> yeah, in the group they actually call it a dragon slaying, where we beat the virus. So you'll see people like this, like, hey, my new Dragon Slayer arrived today, talking about the medication. And so how long did it take you to find out that you could actually purchase the medications that you needed through this Facebook group? Uh, I found out probably about a month and a half after being a part of the group. Uh, I kept seeing everyone mention Greg Jeffrey and how much they had praised him. So eventually I just started clicking on the little blue letters to hyperlink me to him. And that's when, uh, on his profile, I actually found links to his blog site and started reading up on it and watching the Buyer Club videos. Mm. What do you think of Greg Jeffries? He's an angel put on earth. There's no way around that. <laughs> As pharmaceutical drug prices skyrocket in the United States, ordinary people overseas are taking risks to try and help. I never thought that this story would lead me back home, but I've just touched down in Hobart, Tasmania, which is 15,000 kilometers away from the United States. And it's here that one man is taking on Big Pharma by smuggling medicines to those in need. Greg. Ali. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Greg Jeffries used to be an historian and teacher. Now he runs a buyer's club selling hep C medication for cheap. I keep this little stash of medicines in here for people. In the laundry? In the laundry, yep. Like all good <laughs> drug dealers. I try and avoid that term. <laughs> so you've got Sofosfavir, which is brand name Sovaldi and uh, Declatosphere, which is uh, brand name The Cleanser. In America or Europe, you can't buy these two drugs together because of patent issues, mm -hmm. even though that is actually the best and cheapest treatment that exists uh, for 84. Greg months. sources generic versions of Hep C medication from India and sells them to buyers around the world for just $350 instead of $120,000 in the US. He's already received a cease and desist letter from the maker of Savaldi, a pharmaceutical company called Gilead. Is this illegal? It's a grey area. <clears throat> Some countries there's no problem, but uh, in other countries it's definitely illegal. Uh, Canada is illegal. USA, again, it's grey. Um, but I certainly would never go to the USA for fear of being arrested and chucked into a jail there. Yeah, so this is the, the hub of my little network. Greg tells me he receives 100 emails a day from people wanting his help, and most of them are from the US. It's a lot of new inquiries, so, you know, here's one I'm new here. Here's a lady in the US who's had her insurance denied. To think of people knowing that there's a cure there and that they could be well, except for the fact they haven't got enough money to pay for it, to me is obscene. 
For Greg's customers, like Elmer Massey, it takes just 12 weeks to completely eradicate the disease. So how's the treatment going, Elmer? Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, I believe I'm on day 19 or 20, I believe. You feeling better yet? Or are you feeling any benefits uh, from it yet? I noticed that I'm not as, uh, like, physically tired, but I'm still kind of mentally drained, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So why are you doing this? Because I had hep C, because I thought I was going to die from hep C. I've been there, I've felt the desperation, I've felt the hopelessness, I've felt the weight of having something living inside you that you know is slowly killing you. So I know how that feels and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm looking forward to hearing the news when you cure it, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully I can slay this dragon. Yeah, I'm sure you will, I'm sure you will. Good talk to you too. Yeah, see you Bye. mate. Bye. Medicine shouldn't be about making huge profits. Medicine should be about giving people health. Back in the United States, for diabetes sufferers like Landon, there's no such thing as a one-off cure. He needs insulin every day for the rest of his life. So he relies on handouts from strangers to keep him alive. So right here, this is from my friend Elizabeth. She lives in New York. She sent me some insulin pin needles. She sent me a bunch of test strips. Here is the GoFundMe page. And how much has that raised? Uh, so far it's at 38822 Uh He donated $5,000. That blew me away. <laughs> like, that was one of the emotional moments. It's hard for me to imagine just someone being that generous, you know? Because that's a lot. $38,000 is a lot of money for Landon but he's now accumulated over $50,000 in medical bills. 1,580, nice. And isn't sure how he'll get through to his next birthday. How are you all today? Hey, Mama, how you doing? Hey, girl. Happy birthday. For Antoinette, Today, all she can do is mourn what would have been her daughter's 25th birthday. If things don't change, what are the consequences for Antavia's generation? More and more young adults are going to die. They're going to die because they can't afford their health care. Happy 25th birthday, Antavia, a.k.a. Tay-Tay, because we called her Tay-Tay. That was my nickname for her. Uh, mommy, love and miss you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. If you could sit down with big pharma company directors, CEOs, what would be the question that you want to put to them? How much is enough? That would be the question I would put to them. Have you no shame? One, two, three. Happy birthday. Rest in heaven, Tay-Tay, rest in heaven.